All right, good morning. It is Tuesday, August 3rd. We'd like to welcome you uh, to today's news conference. Um, just as a reminder, uh, you can stay connected uh, to Munson Healthcare in a number of different ways, um, including our newsletter. You can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and also get the latest information at MunsonHealthcare.org. Um, wanted to let you know that uh, we did uh, have some scheduling conflicts with the Grand Traverse County Health Department, Benzie Leland County Health Department, and Northwest Michigan Health Services today, so they will be not be joining us. Um, but we do have uh, Dr. Christine Nessie, the Chief Medical Officer from Munson Healthcare, as well as Dr. Jennifer Morse. Uh, with District Health Department 10 um, as panelists today. I want to remind you that you can submit your questions through the Q&A uh, in Zoom, or you can submit questions through comments on Facebook. So please pass those along, and we will uh, share those with the appropriate panelists. With that, I will hand it over to Dr. Christine Nefsi with Munson Healthcare. Hi, Brian. Thank you. Let's go ahead and just move right into the numbers. Um, so you will see we've seen an increase uh, both in our percent positivity. So on our two week average, we're at a three and a half percent. On a weekly average, we're at 5.8. And our cases per 100,000 are up to 69. Um, that is important because it does put us in that CDC category of substantial spread. Next slide. We actually have 20 positive inpatients as of this morning across the Munson healthcare system. Uh, so when we were here two weeks ago, we had five, um, still relatively no, low numbers compared to where we were in April and May, but certainly much higher than we had been seeing pretty consistently for June and July. Next slide. Uh, there you can just see the graphic representation of kind of our peaks and valleys. Um, we had a, a nice flat line there for a while, but you can see that red line uh, ticking back up again. Next slide. This is um, really where we are uh, for the United States. This is um, a report out from the CDC, so you can see uh, that uptick again towards the end there. We are seeing a similar trend, although not that steep here in Michigan, uh, but let's talk about that. Next slide. Uh, there you can see a steady uh, increase in the number of cases. Again, this is across the country from the end of July to August 1st. You can see those darker colors are where you're seeing some of the outbreaks. And if you'll go to the next slide, there you can see um, some hot spots where they're seeing uh, much higher increases in the average daily number of new cases. Next slide. Uh, this is really uh, based on um, being unvaccinated and positivity. So you can see there where the risk levels are. Um, you know, we are definitely seeing a higher percentage of new cases in those uh, members of our population that remain unvaccinated. Next slide. Uh, the, the cause of uh, this spread is the Delta variant. Um, some people are calling it the fastest and fittest. What we do know about the Delta variant is it is highly contagious, much more so than e the original strain or even the alpha strain of the coronavirus. Uh, the mortality rate appears to be about the same, but uh, with a higher spread and a potential higher viral load um, certainly is of a concern. Um, so we are seeing this variant here in northern Michigan, um, and what we are learning is, you know, even a few positive cases can cause a much higher spread than what we saw in the past. Next slide. Uh, one of the things that we're hearing a lot about is the impact of this Delta variant on fully vaccinated individuals. Um, you know, the studies get a little harder when we have more and more people vaccinated and not, so teasing that out. But what we know so far is that there, are, there is a small percentage of vaccinated people that may become infected with the Delta variant. Um, some of those are symptomatic and some of those are not symptomatic. Um, what we also know, though, is when you are immunized, serious symptoms from coronavirus, like significant illness, hospitalization, or even death are 
uh, still very, very low. So the COVID-19 vaccines are quite protective against serious illness, hospitalization, and death. We do um, know that a skipping your second dose um, can certainly put you at increased risk for getting infected with the Delta variant. Uh, so we are still continuing to strongly recommend uh, people get vaccinated against this virus and be sure to take precautions until you have received your second dose and gone, you know, that 10 to 14 days afterwards. Next slide. So as I mentioned, we are seeing a small number of fully vaccinated people have breakthrough cases. Um, again, those variants are much uh, more contagious with a higher, higher viral load. Um, so while, again, the vaccines are quite protective against serious illness, um, you still are at somewhat of a risk uh, with this new variant. Um, and this is why the CDC has uh, changed their recommendation regarding masking. We are doing a lot of monitoring and assessment for how many breakthrough cases we're seeing, uh, reporting that out through state and local health departments um, for breakthrough cases. But again, we, still we are seeing the vast majority of people admitted to the hospital for COVID-19 are not vaccinated. Next slide. Again, the treatment options for COVID-19 remain limited. So vaccine and prevention is your best option. Um, for those with mild illness, uh, there is, uh, if you are qualified, a monoclonal antibody therapy for those 12 and up who are within 10 days of uh, their onset of symptoms and a positive test. So that is an option for treatment. Um, but again, treatment options for this uh, virus are still limited. Next slide. We are um, proud to report that we have participated in giving over 86,000 doses of vaccine, both through our vaccine clinics, as well as working with our primary care physicians and our local health departments. And that effort continues. Next slide. We have um, just over 69% of our eligible employees that have been vaccinated. Um, that obviously uh, fluctuates a bit um, by uh, region and by um, job category. So our frontline providers, physicians, nurses, as an example, um, have a pretty high rate of vaccination. And while we are currently not requiring this vaccine, we do continue to have that conversation and evaluate um, employee vaccination on a daily basis. Next slide. Here's our vaccine coverage dashboard for the state of Michigan. So you can see uh, Leela Nostil is a standout and we have done well here in Northern Michigan. Um, but overall, uh, especially as we see lots of visitors from around the state and other places, uh, we have about a 58% per um, of, our, of our population that have at least initiated the vaccine. Next slide. Um, for our region specifically, we're at just over 61%. For the state, or sorry, for the, uh, all of our states, for the United States, we have over 164 million people vaccinated. And I think this is important as uh, we still hear some concern about vaccination, about how this isn't well studied. I can tell you 164 million vaccines is a lot of uh, a lot of patients and a lot of studies. We still receive rare reports of complications. Me the majority of side effects still are a sore arm, redness or swelling at the ejection site. Um, I won't read those numbers to you. You can see um, certainly by population, the older you are, the more likely you are to be vaccinated, which makes sense given the risk for our older population uh, for complications from this virus. Um, but we continue to make um, you know, good um, leeway there in getting people vaccinated. And um, I do want to reassure people, the more that uh, people are vaccinated, the more studies we have, this is a safe and effective vaccine. Next slide. If you still have questions, if you haven't yet received your vaccine, or even if you have and you have questions, um, you can always go to your primary care physician. Uh, if you don't have a primary care physician, we do offer our Munson uh, healthcare ask a nurse line and they are available to answer any questions you may have. 
I mentioned earlier the new CDC recommendations for fully vaccinated individuals. So you'll recall back when um, our immunization, or sorry, when our uh, infection rate was relatively low, the CDC did uh, recommend that if you were fully vaccinated, you did not have to mask indoors. Uh, with the uh, surge in the Delta variant, which again is much more contagious than what we had been seeing when that CDC recommendation was made, they have changed the recommendation saying that in areas of substantial or high transmission, and again, that is based on your case rate, uh, we are in the substantial range. Uh, they do recommend fully vaccinated people wear a mask indoors. So remember, unvaccinated people, that recommendation for masking has stayed steady. Uh, it was only for fully vaccinated people that that was recommended to change. And now uh, the recommendation is that even if you are fully vaccinated, that you mask indoors. We also want to reiterate the importance of getting tested if you have any symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, so, you know, those symptoms remain relatively the same, aches and pains, fever, cough, runny nose, sore throat, loss of taste or smell, um, any symptoms like that, we do highly recommend that you get tested so that we can ensure uh, that we lock down any spread, further spread, and, and that other people who may be at risk and were had an exposure are aware of that. Um, people who test positive for COVID-19, um, are uh, asked to continue to quarantine. And if you uh, know that you have um, been exposed, even if you are vaccinated, they do recommend a uh, test three to five days after that exposure or any time uh, that you experience symptoms. There are different rules depending on where you are. So if you are in a public transportation, if you are in a hospital, anything like that, there are some rules that have continued stating um, per OSHA and others that uh, mandatory masking is required. But again, the CDC has recently updated their recommendation that everyone, regardless of vaccination status, be masked indoors. Next slide. So, you know, we are, again, this is a highly contagious variant of this uh, virus with uh, looks to be the same uh, mortality rate. Um, so we do uh, want people to remember we can't let our guard down. So even outside, you should be keeping your distance. If you are unaware of somebody's um, vaccine status or uh, certainly if you are at risk, wear your mask when you go out, continue to wash your hands frequently slide. Again, if you have any symptoms or you've been exposed, please get tested. And we are asking you to protect others around you, um, not only with testing, but also with masking. And please remember the monoclonal antibody therapy is an option. If you uh, have mild symptoms, you qualify and you're within the first 10 days of illness. And again, you know, COVID-19 has a 20 times more uh, lethal rate than just the common flu. So anybody that tells you this is just the flu, not true. Next slide. There are um, plenty of resources for both testing and uh, for vaccination. Uh, you can get on the www.michigan.gov slash coronavirus website to find a testing site. Uh, there is a Michigan COVID-19 hotline. I've already mentioned our months in healthcare. Uh, ask a nurse hotline. Many of our primary care providers provide both testing as well as the vaccine, Walgreens and Rite Aid, um, and our lo local health departments are all offering the same. Um, again, just to uh, remind people how important it is to practice that respect, uh, patience and kindness, and why people may still be masking. Um, one is they could just be concerned about the Delta variant and following the CDC recommendations. Um, they could be immunocompromised or live with somebody who is. They could be working in a healthcare setting um, and there's a requirement by OSHA. Um, you know, there is still some hesitation ar around uh, for some people uh, being around other unmasked people. And then remember, we have a large uh, portion of our population, uh, those children who are under the age of 12 who aren't eligible to get vaccinated. 
Uh, we at the hospital are still requiring all staff and providers to screen daily for symptoms. We are still requiring universal masking for all of our employees and any visitors that come in, and we are still screening all patients and visitors as they come into our healthcare settings, whether it's a hospital or a clinic. So just so you know what to expect, those things have to remain unchanged. Um, the big difference uh, really is now that CDC recommendation uh, for vaccinated individuals. All right, thank you, Dr. Nefsi. Uh, we've uh, already received a, a couple of questions and we'll be um, uh, passing those along um, here in just a second. I want to encourage you uh, to continue to ask questions either through the Q&A on Zoom or through comments on Facebook. Um, for now, uh, we are going to hand it over to Dr. Jennifer Morse uh, with a health department update. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, if I could have my slide, great, thank you. So we're seeing the same trends. Our cases are increasing um, gradually, some counties a bit more than others. Um, Kalkaska County is now at the, the high rating with the CDC uh, guidance. Um, and unfortunately you could see with the vaccination numbers, it's one of the lower um, vaccination rates for the area. Uh, we continue to offer vaccines with all of our regular vaccination clinics, and we also have numerous pop-up clinics around the area. You can find those on our website as listed there. We're also happy to schedule or provide pop-up clinics wherever anyone might want them. You just contact us and we'll work with you on setting that up. Um, we are posting on our main website, dhd10.org, um, a map where we are keeping everyone up to date with the masking recommendations based on the uh, CDC activity rate. Um, you know, safest thing right now is to just continue to wear masks while indoors and in crowded outdoor settings, regardless of your vaccination status. Um, we really suspect the Delta variant is much more widespread than we realize at this point because testing has been a bit lower and genotyping has been a bit lower. So um, rather than worrying about what your county's uh, rate is at the moment. Um, it's probably just safest to mask when you're indoors in crowded areas, especially. Um, but we are keeping that information posted. If you would like to, to check that, it might be a little easier than going to the CDC website. Um, we also have added the variant data for our counties to our data page. Uh, we have a data tracker on our COVID page. Um, we also send that out in a weekly update so you can subscribe for our public health alerts and that will be sent to you. Um, I think Dr. Nefsi covered pretty much everything else. Um, again, I, I agree with her, really do encourage anyone who has concerns about an exposure or any symptoms, even if they think it could just be their allergies acting up or something else, please get tested. That's really our only way to control this. Um, we really do see the activity throughout the United States, and it really is now getting up into Michigan. So again, likelihood is we have a lot more activity than we realize, just our testing levels are low. So I think that's all I have for now. So I will uh, pass it back to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Morrison. We did uh, receive uh, a couple of updates from the Grand Traverse County Health Department regarding uh, both uh, uh, testing um, and vaccination. Um, testing uh, drive up uh, is done in the parking lot behind the main building under the carports over there on Lafrenia Road in Traverse City. Um, Monday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., 1 to 4 p.m. Um, additional hours this week on Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then again from 1 to 4. Results are delivered electronically within two hours. Um, additional testing will be offered uh, each week as the demand um, dictates. Uh, next slide, please. And then in terms of vaccination, um, the walk-in schedule this week uh, is on Tuesday and Thursday. Again, they are offering Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Um, the uh, hours are 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday at the Cherryland Mall, same location on Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And a reminder that uh, for uh, children ages 12 to 15, a guardian is required to be present. And then uh, for kids 16 and 17, it requires a uh, guardian's uh, consent. So we, uh, as always, do want to uh, uh, continue to encourage you to uh, get vaccinated. 
Um, so with that, uh, that uh, brings us uh, to uh, the uh, questions for today. Um, and I wanna start with uh, Dr. Morse here. Um, a month ago, we were worried about the possible surge with the 4th of July visitors. Has that materialized in what you'd consider significant numbers? And then what are the concerns as we continue to see more summer festivals and then um, school approaching here toward the end of, of August and early September? So I don't think we've noticed an appreciable surge after the 4th of July, but we are getting quite a few more cases now. And uh, my communicable disease nurses are telling me that quite a few of them are from out of state um, or for, uh, from out of our local area. So we are seeing quite a few people getting tested in our area that are not from our area. So we do know there are a lot of people coming in, you know, as tourists that are positive. We've had, again, many from out of state so those numbers will not count towards our Michigan numbers. Um, so that can be a little deceiving. So again, we may have much higher numbers that aren't being counted. Um, and again, our testing numbers are just quite low. Um, so again, I really do suspect we have more out there that we're just not aware of. I'm concerned with school starting. Um, I'm really not sure what to expect. You certainly will have increased numbers just because people are congregating. And I think without having requirements, we'll see a wide variety of mitigation measures being used in the schools. We know what worked last year. Um, this year, without some of those mitigation measures in place, we're not really sure what will happen. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, with the urgency that's been created by the Delta variant, and it, uh, it uh, uh, keeps showing up in the news more and more. Um, have we in our region seen an uptick in vaccination as a result of that urgency, um, similar to maybe what they've seen in other areas? I don't think an appreciable amount, not not anything that has really been commented on. Though in some of my counties, when people have been asked why they're coming in now to get vaccinated, um, many of them do comment it's because of the Delta variant, but again, it's not like we're seeing, um, you know, large, large increases in numbers of people coming in to get vaccinated. Uh, I'd like to ask a question uh, to you now, Dr. Nefsi. Um, I guess when we talk about um, urgency as it pertains to the Delta variant and the potential um, uh, for uh, another uh, surge in our hospitals. Can you speak to um, what a surge would mean um, during this time of year when the uh, population influx is so much higher in our region and the um, potential, uh, potential challenges that that could, uh, that could give to our hospitals? Yeah, you, you bring up a good point, Brian, and I think people will recall way back when, when this started, you know, a lot of the uh, concern was about hospitals being sort of overwhelmed with patients. Um, what we are dealing with right now, as you mentioned, is probably our busiest season, um, not only at Munson Medical Center, but really around our region at our community hospitals. So um, not only do we have that um, on, with a potential another COVID surge, and we're seeing um, an increase in other um, infectious diseases like RSV, uh, which really impacts um, our younger population and our elderly. Um, so certainly that is still uh, the concern, um, you know, with staffing and other issues that uh, we just have uh, the breadth um, and the bandwidth to take care of an increased number of patients like that. Um, Dr. Morris, in, uh, in regards to quarantining, if, uh, if a vaccinated person um, has knowingly been in contact with someone who is COVID, po COVID positive, whether that's a breakthrough case or someone who is unvaccinated, has that quarantine period changed um, at all? And is, is how that person should proceed changed at all? So if you're fully vaccinated, the CDC still states that you don't have to quarantine as long as you remain symptom free. So you can continue on as usual, just watch yourself for symptoms. They have added that recommendation as Dr. Nefsi mentioned um, to consider getting tested three to five days after your exposure. 
And uh, as a follow-up question to that, does that mean that in terms of the way uh, this this new variant um, and the onset of, onset of symptoms, is it is it the same or similar to what we've seen previously uh, in terms of when you would start to see those symptoms if you were indeed infected? Yeah, in fact, I was talking to a colleague who, the medical director for Kent County, and she said, talking to their infectious disease specialist over there, um, that they've been seeing with the Delta variant, it usually, the onset of symptoms is usually quite quick. And the average for COVID in general is usually within three to five days. So it seems to be on par with other, other variants. Um, but yeah, that seems to be what the trend is, is that the symptoms start relatively quickly. If you get tested too soon, you can have a false negative. Um, so three to five days for testing has been the guidance for exposure, but with symptom onset, it seems to be, again, on, on par with the other variants. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nefsi, you mentioned um, during your presentation that the, one of the good reasons to get tested um, uh, is to uh, uh, have the opportunity to, to use therapy such as monoclonal antibody. Um, and you need to know within a certain time frame if you're able to take advantage of that. Um, with the new Delta variant, um, have therapies been as effective um, as uh, with, the, with the, the previous variant? or uh, do we not have enough data yet? No, it's a good question. We actually, the, the state had um, a while ago, I think even maybe a month ago, recommended an adjustment to what the monoclonal antibody therapy was so that it was effective against the Delta variant. So that is something that we uh, continually look at and change so that that therapy is as effective as we can make it. Um, Dr. Morris, um, you know, we mentioned in the in the uh, in Grand Traverse update um, when results would be returned in terms of testing. Um, is is there a way to indicate at the various testing sites how quickly those results will be uh, returned, whether it's in a couple of hours or a half hour or um, in days? How how is that indicated? So. At community testing sites like that, they usually do uh, rapid testing. Um, most of them do batches and they usually take about half an hour to run those tests. And so what I've noticed them doing is, is they usually, they have a lot of them. And so it takes a while to run them and they'll let you know, usually within an hour or two. And then if you're positive, you can come back for confirmatory testing if needed. Um, that's usually all communicated ahead of time as they're advertising or marketing the, the event or as you're getting tested. Um, if there's testing that goes to a laboratory that can take longer, um, it just depends on the site. I'm not able to really to say for each location. Most labs now get testing back very quickly. I will kind of segue a little bit when we're talking about variant testing, that can take several weeks to come back. That goes to a specialized laboratory that's really not meant for clinical care. It's more for us to know what's happening to manage public health. We do try to let patients know if they've tested positive for a variant, but your clinician doesn't usually find out. It, again, it's more of a public health matter, but that can take, again, unfortunately, it takes several weeks for those results to come back. And uh, Delta cases have, have all already been acknowledged here in Northern Michigan. And um, Dr. Nefsi, a, a question that we've received here is if there is any estimation as to when that might create a surge and, um, and what that uh, might look like compared to previous surges, um, given that, uh, that we have a, a good deal more of our population vaccinated now than we did, say, in the spring? That's a great question, and I, I wish I could tell you with definity. Mm -hmm. um, some of it depends on us, right? So um, yes, we are better protected um, with our higher numbers of people being vaccinated. We are also less protected by being wide open and maskless in many of our indoor and outdoor settings. So I think if people um, you know, respond to and listen to the CDC's recommendation to start uh, masking when they're in indoor settings or crowded outdoor settings, 
Uh, they sort of reestablish some of those mitigation factors we've been talking about for the last 18 months, just being careful, um, you know, ensuring that the people you're hanging out with, you either know that they're vaccinated or if they're not, they're masked and you are and you're maintaining your distance and those kinds of things. I think if we uh, re-adopt those strongly, uh, we have a good chance at um, blunting any surge that may happen. If we choose not to do those things, then um, certainly if you look at other places, uh, both nationally and internationally, uh, the Delta variant has um, surged quite broadly. Uh, Dr. Morris, another question for you, and, and this is uh, continuing to look ahead. Um, is there an Epsilon variant or a, a, a new variant <laughs> beyond Delta that's already being uh, monitored? Um, there's other variants of interest, which means they're kind of on the radar and they're watching them, um, but they haven't really caused much of an issue. So this is just basic evolution. Um, if as something replicates, it mutates and the strongest and the best survive and go on to create more of themselves. The best way to stop that is to stop the replication and the spread. So that's getting as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible so that this virus can't keep spreading. Um, so the sooner we do that, the fewer variants we're going to have. But whenever one mutates and is stronger and fitter and can spread faster and better, um, it's going to dominate. And then when another one supersedes that, it'll dominate. So that's just how viruses operate. Uh, Dr. Morris, I'll give you another one here. If we have traveled in or out of the state recently but do not have symptoms, should we consider getting tested as a precaution if we have been vaccinated? That's, it's not an official recommendation, but if you've gone to an area that's very highly effective and you've been around a lot of people, um, or especially if you've known that you've been exposed to someone who's positive, um, you certainly should. There's nothing wrong with getting a screening test. If you have any concerns, there are locations that are simply doing screening tests. And for about $10 a test now, you can test at home. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Rite Aid, you can get screening tests now and do those at home. So if you ever have concerns, you can do that. Some of those tests have a little bit um, higher sensitivity, so they might give you a false positive. So if you have no symptoms and it's positive, you can always follow up for a more sensitive or more specific test at your local lab. But um, yeah, if you have any concerns, there's nothing wrong with getting tested. Uh, Dr. Nefsky, I'll, I'll go back to you. Um, in, back in the spring, um, I think one of the, the huge reliefs for people is, is that if you were vaccinated and perhaps um, an elderly parent or someone you uh, uh, in your family or a friend who is immunocompromised was vaccinated, um, it, was, it was deemed safe to go back and visit those people um, in person that you can even do so um, without a mask. How do you think that that, how has that changed with this um, new Delta variant? And is it advisable to be tested if you're going to see someone who may be vaccinated, but would still fit within that high risk um, category otherwise? You know, I, it's a good question, and it is commented on a little bit in the new CDC recommendations, and that is really that, um, you know, indoor settings or around immunocompromised people, um, you know, so anybody that's high risk, anybody that's immunocompromised, we know even, you know, without formally clinical, a clinical diagnosis uh, of that, uh, our patients or members of our population that are elderly um, probably have a less a robust immuno, immune response to the vaccine. So I think that given um, how contagious this variant is, if you have someone uh, that is high risk, um, taking those precautions of uh, masking um, and, and keeping your distance are a good idea. And certainly as Dr. Morse alluded to, if you have any risks, if you've, if you've traveled, been around somebody, um, you know, been exposed to a, a place where there's a high rate of spread, um, getting tested and monitoring yourself for symptoms is a good idea. Uh, Dr. Morse, in some cases, um, uh, people may have gone back into an office setting um, uh, you know, since the since the spring, and a question here: Are there any recommendations for air filtration or improving airflow in an office space to help prevent spread of COVID? 
So that's one of the prevention strategies for COVID. Um, and all workplaces have minimum requirements for ventilation and air quality for their workers. The CDC has different resources and guidance to help that, um, to help give guidance for COVID prevention. So I would refer people to that um, resource. Um, and I'll, I'll split a couple of questions um, regarding the vaccine between the two of you. Um, and uh, Dr. Nefsi, I'll go to you first. Um, are there any updates on the potential for a booster um, for the, the COVID uh, vaccine uh, now that we get kind of further and further down the road? Yeah, it's a topic of a lot of conversation and study. Um, what we know is that, uh, you know, the, the vaccines that have been approved for emergency use authorization here in the United States continue to do studies, testing uh, those people that have received the vaccine and their immune response um, and are fully prepared, I think, when they see that immunity start to wane uh, to get boosters out. The real question is the timing of when that is. Is it annual? You know, is it less or more frequent than that. And that's really the, the question that hasn't yet been answered, but definitely something that uh, wouldn't be a surprise to people if a booster was required. Um, we're just really waiting to understand when that timing is. And with uh, so many um, seniors that have been vaccinated um, because they were in that high risk level, um, the, the demographic has, has changed with um, those that we're seeing in the hospital. Uh, do we see the, the Delta um, impacting um, maybe younger children differently uh, than, than previous uh, strains of, of COVID-19? You know, I, I can tell you with our last surge, we certainly saw a, a significant number of children impacted by it. So when you looked at our children's hospitals across the state, um, they had a number of those kids uh, that were uh, infected and, and re, you know, uh, suffered from kind of that long-term um, response to the, the coronavirus. We are too early in this search now. We just sort of saw that last one, that the, those numbers wane. Um, so we're a little bit early uh, in this one to understand um, what the impact of this variant in particular may be, but certainly there's been nothing that I've heard from other countries that have seen a surge in this variant to suggest that kids would not be impacted. And uh, Dr. Morris, I'll go back to a, a vaccination question. Uh, is there any update regarding the possibility of vaccination for children 12 and under now? I know the, the FDA is requesting more data and more study on that before they approve that. Um, kids certainly get infected, kids certainly spread uh, COVID, but their risks of serious illness is very low. And so they want to ensure that any potential risk of the vaccine, albeit very, very low, is lower than their risk from the illness itself. So they're, they're really being cautious about that. Um, and I know that's a frustration for a lot of, of families right now. Well, that brings us um, uh, through our, our list of questions today, Dr. Nefsi and Dr. Morris. Thank you so much uh, for spending time today and providing such uh, great information. Um, and we want to thank uh, everyone who uh, uh, joined in and participated um, in today's uh, news conference. Uh, once again, there, uh, there is information um, that you can find um, uh, through multiple organizations, uh, obviously statewide, uh, nationwide, and particularly in our area. And we have uh, listed many of those websites um, on your screen uh, right there. And, and once again, uh, Munson Healthcare uh, wants to keep you connected to all the latest information. Um, you can uh, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and uh, also find the latest updates at MunsonHealthcare.org. Once again, thank you for being with us for today's news conference. Hope that you found today's uh, information helpful. Uh, be sure to, to share it with others um, and be safe, uh, be well, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, Brian.